Today I want to talk about how I have progressed in my painting this past year and the goals I have moving forward to develop my art career and hopefully someday do this full time. This video isn't all about me though. I'm hoping also that you can learn something about goal setting on a micro scale and on a macro scale. Think about where you want to be a year from now, what outcome you would like to have with your art career. Then think about the steps you intend to take to get there. Of course we all know it's been a strange year, one with many people having to be isolated and spending time alone. This past year, I am extremely grateful to be able to say that I have thrived with my painting. I am no exception to the whole situation when it comes to isolation, and it's easy for me to say because I naturally am it I'm naturally uh, an introvert that likes to work independently and can focus for long periods of time on solitary projects. Anyways, I've done many paintings this past year, and many of them having been either commissions or ones that I've been able to sell. The reason I believe that this has come to pass was because I've spent years in preparation for this. I have hundreds if not thousands of hours of practice in this, and it was always because of my passion for it and fascination with uh, creating something out of nothing. My technical ability hasn't evolved that much this, pa this past year, ironically enough. I've been mostly focusing on just execution, hard work, analyzing my feedback on social media, and some experimentation of subject matter. Looking back at my commission paintings that I've done, I'm glad I did them because I helped bring joy to somebody's life. But sometimes I couldn't help but feel like it was just a job instead of creating something out of inspiration. This is quite the conundrum for me as well as many other artists. So where do you draw the line? For me at least it didn't matter to me because regardless of what I painted I felt like it was therapeutic for me. Painting and listening to podcasts is like going to a therapy session because I've been struggling a lot with anxiety and some fatigue issues for the longest time. And so getting paint to do something that I like is a gift. I think I'm going to focus less on commissions this time around and aim more towards uh, original ideas because that's where the real joy comes in with my paintings. And that's where I find myself spending the most time painting without taking any breaks. I could go on for hours and hours working on an inspired painting as opposed to a commission where I can only do maybe a maximum of an hour per day. I've heard that some artists struggle with coming up with original ideas. Here's a technique that I have been using for a while now. Many artists, including musicians, testify to this technique. I don't know if this has any name to it, but this is how it works. And the real magic is that you don't really need to do anything. So, at nighttime, just before you're falling asleep, your brain is in a much more relaxed state. It begins emitting alpha waves, which are at a lower frequency than the brain waves you have when you're fully conscious. These relaxed brain waves somehow tap into another reality, whether it's the subconscious or something else I don't know. But at this brief window of time, just before I fall asleep, I notice that I get these random images popping up in my mind. I mean, they are just so random, but sometimes they can serve as a brilliant idea for a painting that has some abstract elements to it with some realism as well. Also, many times I hear fully composed music playing through my head. <laughs> And I know it sounds crazy, but I mean, it's a, it's a fully composed melody or uh, riff that I've never heard before. It just comes out of nowhere. And uh, I've heard that many uh, musicians actually testify to this too, that they just get up all of a sudden and they just uh, write it down. So yeah, sometimes I get out of bed to go to my computer and start working on the basic framework of this musical composition. Or I quickly write down this image that pops up in my head and add it to my list of ideas. It's so interesting how the human brain works, and we still haven't been able to fully comprehend this, even with all of our technological advancements. Anyways, this is definitely something I intend to work on more this year. Creating more original paintings and focusing less on landscapes and portraits like I've been doing for a while. One thing that I've been procrastinating on is doing plein air painting. painting. Plein air, plain air, I don't know how you pronounce it. I've never done it before because honestly I haven't built up the curse to go out in public and just stand there and paint. But this summer I would like to start doing that. Driving out to downtown Chicago and sit up somewhere like maybe at a park and see what I could do there on the spot. Who knows, maybe I could gain an even bigger following and sell some paintings on the side. Another thing I would like to do this year is to figure out how to sell prints online. I've had some success with selling some work on Etsy but I would like to figure out how to 
sell copies of my work and do it on a wider scale so that I could save much time and money. Anyways, this is how my year has been going so far, and I'm extremely grateful for being able to thrive during this strange time of the world. From one artist to another, I hope that your 2021 will be full of thriving and growth so that you yourself are able to continue to develop as an artist and gain an understanding of your goals and put them into perspective. Also, of course, I cannot forget to mention the growth of my channel. I've acquired more subscribers during this time, and for each and every one of you I, that are still watching, I want to thank you. Every time I see another subscriber added or read another comment, I am encouraged greatly to keep going with this channel. Anyways, that's it for now, but thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.